So we'll start up front and talk about what we need from those guys. Really what we're looking for are four players to close the four interior gaps between the tackles. So those are the A gaps and B gaps. We need to do that because we cannot guarantee that we will have an available linebacker to fit those gaps. We also would like to have a D-line looper or some sort of second level guy that's working towards the side that the quarterback would keep. We'll have some extra perimeter players coming from the outside, but it helps to have an inside guy working inside out so you can vice the quarterback on a keep. And I'll draw some of that up and we'll see what we're looking for there. Now you can do this one of two ways in my mind. One is with four true defensive linemen. So you're just playing a four down structure, that's fine. Or playing an odd structure with three D line and one inside backer. Now I say that, and just to clarify what I mean there, because there's a lot of three down teams that play like a, an edge guy, like a, it really is more like an outside backer body. Um, but if you're in a four down structure, he's like your boundary five technique C gap guy, which is fine. Like that type of guy might be able to hold up just fine against the tackle playing the C gap. Like in high school, that might be like a 185 pound guy um, that's a good athlete and he can play on the perimeter and do just fine, hold his own. But if you ask that guy to play in the B gap now, that's a little different matter. Same thing like small college level, that guy might be a 225 pound guy that does really well on the edge, but he cannot play in the B gap. And so, again, what I would advise is actually playing three D linemen in the B gaps and the A gap, and then having another inside backer to fit the other A gap. So we'll draw that up and talk more about that. But some things, that, again, that we'll look at, gap, cancel gap cancellation stunts and fronts. Um, we'll have a gate stunt between the two interior guys that we'll talk about. Some now stunts, which happen right away. Read stunts, which in which you're reading the offensive line, what we call Tupac front, and then uh, true odd front, like we just mentioned. The other thing here is with these stunts, you know, whether they're for run or pass purposes, it just helps to cut up the front one way or another, whether it's a run or pass. You can still um, get some value, I think, out of pass rush stunts to close the windows for the quarterback, get the quarterback off his spot, take away draw, which again, you can be light on draw if you don't have your inside gaps covered. Um, and close off running lanes, as we've been talking about. So we'll start out here with that gate stunt. Now this is two things here. It's a it's an interior stunt between the two D tackles. It's also a read stunt, reading the center. So what we're going to do here is align in two techniques. You can also do it from like an over front, maybe from double two eyes, but it helps to have them have a little bit of space from the center so they can read his block. But we're going to be in double two techniques here, we're going to both slant inside and read the center's block. If he's to you, you're going to be the looper going second. If he's away from you, you're going to be going first. So with the back here and the center blocking away, this might be like zone read, like inside zone type of a concept. So this guy, the, the tackle in this picture, he is going to go right through the center's hip and try to blow him back off of the nose here. So we're trying to get the ball to cut back by the penetrator and then the looper is going to be here engage the center and then let his buddy go first and he's going to wrap back around here to the b gap tight in the b gap to uh play the cutback the guard should be staying on the penetrator usually because he blocked down the center's blocking away he has to stay on this guy actually so usually this will get collapsed down here but then the looper can just come back side here and clean up the cutback is what you're hoping for the center goes the opposite way with the back here. Usually this would be like a gap scheme, like say they, they're running power to this side with a backside puller here. So now the nose, he'll go first because the center's away from him. So he's got the same thing going right through the center tip, trying to knock him off the tackle, reading the center's block, the center's at him. So he's going to loop. So again, he'll come tight here in the B gap and he can spill anything that comes his way. It's probably going to hit wider, but it gives you an extra guy to that side. I should also say, I'll, I'll back up one. The other thing this can do is if they're blocking like this and because you're canceling gaps, you really should be chasing. I'm getting ahead of myself, but if this the end is chasing, you actually can have the looper uh, wrap tight here and be your inside quarterback player. And then you've got a hook curl defender or some sort of perimeter guy coming late uh, to be your outside in quarterback player. So we'll look at some examples here of that gate stunt. So this one here, this is good. We're not actually playing Tampa 2. I'll go back to the wide view. We're not actually playing Tampa 2 here. 
we're playing three deep zone. But because it's quarterback run, we're still short. So because of what they're doing, they're running gap scheme with the quarterback. And they're, so they're playing 11-man football right now. We actually need this guy to be able to stop the run. It's not a great business model playing three deep zone, having the middle of the field player be the only guy that's left to tackle the quarterback. So we're in good shape here, actually, because we're running that gate stunt. So you can see the tackle. So we're running it from over front here. The tackle going first. He sees the centers away from him, so he's making an inside move. He's going to the center. We're wrapping with uh, with the looper because the center's at him. This is actually something that happens quite a bit is the center feels that you're trying to loop, and he, he locks on, so you have to you know beat the hold there. But you can see they actually have us. You know We're going to get here late probably with our backside safety, but the nose ends up being the one that makes the player does a really good job and, and kind of gets us out of a bad spot there to just get the ball on the ground and be able to play the next play. We're running the same thing here, gate stunt from double twos versus power. This is just a good uh, good stunt in general to get good at, I think. It's really good versus inside run, inside zone, power, most types of gap scheme. You do not want it against outside zones. You have to pick your spots and maybe you know have awareness of the backfield set, those types of things. But I think for most inside runs, if you can get good at this, this is a helpful thing to be able to do. So again, centers away, penetrator, looper. And again, just an extra guy there at the point of attack to help clean things up. It's going to be an RPO throw here, but they're blocking runs, so you get to, you get to see how it works on inside zone. Again, penetrator's getting it to cut off, or sorry, to cut back, cuts the playoff, and then looper can come backside here. So again, this is not just a Tampa 2 thing for us. Just a good way to um, even get pressure against the pass, like I believe we'll see here. So you can penetrate. Center's there. He can even ricochet on pass. He can even ricochet off the center. And then, again, looper there. The guard has to lock on. So there's really nobody, if you can get him around cleanly, there's nobody there to block the looper. We've got one more here. I think this is a run play. Helps if you've got a couple other things you can do from this front. Either do it from over front, or if you've got other you know slants that you can do from a double two technique front, so they don't always know that it's coming. Again, really good example here. Inside zone. Again, this guy cuts it off. Nice tight loop there by the uh, by the looper because the center was at him. Usually what we're telling the inside backer, like in this case, again, we're not playing Tampa 2, but for, for in interior fitters, if you are playing this with inside backers that are available, usually the ball actually hits between these two guys, between the 2D tackles, but he has to, uh, you know, be patient there a little bit and, and let the play declare. But a you know, good example there on how we're trying to fit it with the gate stunt. Come back to that thought in a little bit here.